Hello everyone, it's Pam here with Tattered Paper and Lace. Thank you for joining me today and I just wanted to come on and show you a few more things that you can do with pressed flowers uh, and plant matter uh, for your journals to, to make some ephemera for your journals. So last time, if you watched the video last time, I made uh, specimen cards out of uh, junk mail envelopes. Today, I want to embellish glassine bags and or um, uh, these, which are tracing paper bags that I made myself. So this is what we're going to do today. This is the process. Got a couple of tags here with dried flowers on it or uh, pressed flowers on it and I have this tag with pressed flowers on it. These tags are cutoffs from another other couple of other tags I made that look like this. And this, just so you know, is made with bleeding tissue that has already been used. I don't know if you know what bleeding tissue is, but you can dye your papers with bleeding tissue. And my friend Dee from the paper drawer gave me her leftovers after she had used them to, to dye some paper with. And I just... Um, collage them onto tags and make a tag out of them. So this is the cutoffs from a couple of tags that I have made. And I uh, thought, well, let me use these little cutoffs uh, to make pressed flowered tags. So that's what we have here. Now my lighting is uh, a little precarious because I don't really want to blind you with the reflection off of my mat here. Uh, let me just tell you what my mat is. My mat is, this mat here, is uh, contact paper, and I, I attach it to my desk. I cannot stand things that move around, so I, uh, I put this, I move it out a little bit, let you see what I'm talking about. Slowly, I'll do that. As you can see, it comes up, it covers pretty good space. Now you can see over to the edge of my desk over here. This is so this is my desk area and this and then the other side is about the same distance over. And that is what I use as my splat mat, if you will. Uh, and then I can just change it when it gets too grungy for for me. I can change it. Let me get you back in, in focus here with what I'm doing. Uh, I change it and put a new one in. So, we've got tags. I'm not going to do the tags today, but the process is the same as what I will be showing you today. Uh, and this is a recycled um, bag like this, which came from a wedding that I attended. And of course, as we do, I was asking everybody, and I didn't get everybody's, but I got as many as I could. Uh, of these bags, they had lavender in them, and they, and we were tossing lavender instead of um, rice as they went away, and it had these labels on it, which doesn't have the people's name on it. It just says, toss the lavender, shout hooray, the new Mr. and Mrs. are on their way. So I kept those for, for collage and background pieces and things like that, clusters and sort, but they were stuck to this in their sticky back stickers so I just took them all off with this if you do not have undo undo you need to get some because it is the best thing to take off sticker type pieces and they would after they're dried which takes only seconds to dry uh, they are then sticky again to be used wherever else you might want them so these are recycled I made these, uh, this size, which is a bigger, a little shorter, but a little wider, a little, little wider, a little shorter. Uh, I made these out of tracing paper, or, or you can even use deli paper kind of paper. So uh, this is what I wanted to show you today. And we're gonna start off with uh, this sort. Get my paintbrush here. And what I have done, let me show you first. This is my collection of dried flowers. 
or pressed flowers, I should say, pressed flowers and leaves. I put them in envelopes. I have them in glassine envelopes, vellum envelopes. I have them between tracing paper or parchment paper. And I just, as I pull them out of my book and I use a book to um, press them, I'll show you that as well. I have a couple of books I use, but I'll show you the main one I use most of the time. Uh, and it is full right now of pressed flowers. Or, or flowers pressing in the process. Uh, this is the book I use. It's a very old, very thick. Let me move you up a little bit. Very, very old, very thick. And you can see kind of where some of the flowers are. Uh, and I just, I just put page after page after page. Uh, and then I close it up with this huge rubber band that says, get a grip, love it. <laughs> uh, and then I just uh, put that on the shelf and it sits on the shelf until such time as the flowers are as dry as they will be or need to be or as dry as I want them to be. Then we're going to apply them to these bags. So let me show you how I do that. I thought this you might find this an, as a, an interesting process. I don't know if other people do this. I've, I've I haven't seen it, but that doesn't mean it's not out there. There are, <coughs> excuse me, few things that are actually new because everything comes back around. So I've used Tracy Fox labels on these. I think I'm going to do some stamping on the ones I'm going to do today. So we'll lay these aside. And this is a uh, faux handmade paper. I'll show you how I do that as well. I forgot to get one thing, so you'll have to excuse me a minute. But these are the flowers I'm using. I have already... See, these lights get in the way. I have already um, picked out what I wanted to do and already have it arranged. I have already done that so it wouldn't take so I wouldn't take that long. Uh, that that process wouldn't be so long. I'm gonna lay these over to the side. These are the bags I'm using. I've coffee dyed two of them and left one of them white. Well and, and I haven't this is, these are the only ones I've coffee dyed. I inked around this one, so it was white like this, but I inked around it, so you can do that as well. These are, like I said, glassine bags, and I also, part of getting ready for this, let me turn this on if I can, my iPad I have in front of me, and I have a picture of the three that I want to do today, again, making the process, we hope, not as long. So what I'm going to, what I will be using today, these are pressed flowers from my yard. This is plant matter from my yard. Did not press these. Fresh off the plant, made this. These were pressed and they're from my yard. What I'm gonna be using today is some from my yard and some are pressed flowers that were purchased and given to me by my friend Dee at the paper drawer for either Christmas or my birthday. Those two days are right together. I was born the day after Christmas. And so I don't remember which event that was, but it was one of those two things. So thank you, Dee, for that. I'm using these today, and I hope that you, if you're watching, will enjoy my video. So the flowers I'm using today on this one are... She also gave me these um, tweezers, which I have some tweezers, but these are very pointy, so they're a little bit easier to pick up the flowers with. Now, I hope that you have enough light and that this light here is not too blinding. I have a little problem with that. Anyway, so I'm going to arrange this group of flowers right here bring these up for you to see, on this white bag that has not been, uh, that has not been uh, coffee dyed. Uh, this and this little purple one right here, these two things came from my yard. I don't know what that is, but it's a little flower. And this is from a feather leaf Japanese maple. That's going to be my greenery in this. So these things came in in a purchased a purchased bag. Let me show you what that looks like. I don't know where she got them. They were on, from Amazon. I'm still pretty sure. 
but so these are some of the ones that I have that were purchased and he gave me. So I believe that came from Amazon. So what I'm gonna do is like I said, I've had have a picture here of how I want to arrange this so I don't spend time figuring out how I want to arrange. So I'm going to give you an idea of how I'm going to arrange. How did I do this? Because I had this underneath the, the petals of this a little bit. Somehow, I don't remember how I did that. So we'll either do it or we won't. It won't matter. I think I did it kind of like that. And so they're very delicate, so you've got to be very careful with how you how you deal with them. But this, oh, and this one's from my yard as well. And put that one up there. I put this one. I don't have that exactly right. So I did this like this. This was my greenery. That's not right either. Okay, I know that one goes there. This goes down here. It's like this. And this goes on top. Like that. And then this, I stick out right here. Like it's one of these, not like it's a flower like this. Not fully formed. I thought that looked pretty good. Then this one I put right here as if this little bit of this leaf, feather leaf, was the stem of that. I like for things to connect. And then I had I have it I had that on the bottom originally, but it could go on the top as well. So ow. These things are sharp. These these things are sharp. So let's see. I actually had that a little more turned, and I like this, and I like this down here better. Oops, I'm always, always the bottom of my stuff is out of frame. <sighs> I'm working on it. Okay, so this is how I'm going to basically arrange this. It's like this. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like, and how I do this is I will just move these back away. And I take, just like on the specimens, I take glue, my art glitter glue, to just get these glued down enough so that they don't move. So if you don't have any tweezers like this, they're, they're really good for this kind of thing. But I just, I'm just gonna gently put a little bit of glue all the way down these little leaves because I, I don't want them to come up but I will be closing them I mean I will be uh, sealing it with um, some Liquitex matte medium then I'll just stick those down like that just like this and then this one will go here just like this Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put me some glue on, whoops, on this one. I've tried to be very delicate with these because they will break. And they will not be good if they're broken. So I'm going to just put some glue, not a whole lot, just dab it around and place it like I want that to be, just like that. And I will... Press that down, and then this, make sure we've got, a, got that up enough that I can put this underneath there, yeah. Now this one is gonna be a little more, I'm just gonna dot it, do it over here, dot it on the flower part, just a little bit, don't want a lot. And then this, will slide under. I have to do it with my fingers. I have to slide under this right here. And this is a little tedious. You gotta, you know, you gotta be willing. And 
And we'll put that like that. Dab that down. So that just kind of keeps it in place, uh, which is really all we're going to do because this, the, oh, and I'm doing this backwards, but it'll work because I've done them both ways. Normally, I would have done matte medium on the base of this first. And I kind of totally forgot that process. Is that not terrible? Oh well, I totally forgot that process, but it'll still work. You can use your paintbrush to kind of get everything because it's gonna it's gonna be okay. It'll work. I've done it both ways, but I have discovered, so I'll do it the other way on the other ones. Uh, I have discovered I like to do the matte medium first and then matte medium on top, but I have done it this way as well. So it's not the end of the world. It will still work. It will still hold. And because uh, I've done this in a book, on a page in a book, and I did not use matte medium on it first. I just glued them down, but I did do, do a little more gluing. I'll show you that one in the book. It's a, it's a journal I have in my shop. If you want to go take a look, you can. Now, if I need to lift something up, I like to have a blade handy to do so because you can lift it back up just a little bit. Be careful. And this needs to go underneath this, so I didn't do that as well as I'd like. But it's okay. Come on, go under there. There you go. Move it over there toward that little... There. Okay, so that is where this is going to go. Now, like I said, if I'd have been thinking properly you would put the you can use mod podge you can use any kind of decoupage glue i have found the matte medium liquitex is my glue of choice one it is truly matte two it uh dries pretty quick it's very liquidy which i like and i just put it on my mat here you can't see it. It's right there. Um, and I use a soft, let me put this out of the way, a soft bristle brush. I'm going to move this over some. So hopefully I can make this be like over the bag and you won't get blinded by the light. Okay, so normally I would have brushed the whole thing with this matte medium first and then laid the flowers down, even gluing them still maybe. Uh, but I didn't do that, so I am just going to do it over it now. I will do the other ones in that way because that's what I meant to do. I did it over the whole bag. Oh, and I was going to stamp too, but oh well, I didn't do that either. I'm not very well prepared, but it's okay because everything is different. Everything does differently, you know, acts differently. And if you need to get some underneath, these and that's why I would have you know you still can do that and it's going to seal the top of it so it isn't going to come up it isn't going to lift up it isn't going to do anything um, so you can do it this way and you just put matte medium all over the bag I like to put it kind of thick you do it very lightly And we'll let this one dry while I do the other ones. And then I will, if it's not dry yet, I will. also can stamp afterwards. I don't have to stamp. Uh, I'm going to stamp with a, um, da, 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 the permanent, the permanent kind of ink anyway. So I'll just take it and I'll wipe this off. Okay, and I'm going to lay that. So that's what this looks like. This, it will not be shiny when, when you're done uh, because it is a matte medium and it truly is matte. I do not like decoupage. My le that's my least, I mean, uh, not decoupage, Mod Podge. That's my least favorite kind of glue like this. So the next one I will, I will do this first. And then will be good to go. So you don't have to, if you're going to do the matte medium first, you don't really have to glue it. 
um, because the matte medium is the glue. So that really works well if you're doing it this way. Now, if I'm doing it on a book page, I don't generally want to do the whole book page, so I will glue it on, and again, I'll show you. So we have that all on there, and the next one I'm going to do is a yellow one. That I found that I like the yellow colors, yellow golden kind of colors on uh, the coffee dyed paper. So I'm going to put that one down just like that. And you just kind of pat it down. Let me see. I got to find my, I got to do my uh, pictures. My pad keeps turning off. Come on, pad. Turn on. Okay, here we go. Yep, that's that's where I wanted that. And then the next thing is going to be this. These are the purchased flowers, pressed flowers. And I like to make the stem. I want to make all the stems come right to there. So you just push that down just like that. This is going to go right under here just like this and this is orange it might turn out it might look a little pink uh, on camera but it's really orange this little thing here and this is the only piece well it's not the only piece but it is one of the pieces I only have two pieces here this is a little piece of white flower that came from my yard that's going to go right there. You don't see it much, but it gives a, a little texture. And the rest of these, or most of these, and see, I, I got this a little closer to the edge than I wanted to, but we're going to put that over this anyway, just like that. So when I originally laid it down, I had it a little further away. I had this, this piece was a little in a little bit different angle, but it's okay. And then this is let's see yeah this is the one this is from my yard this is the feather leaf i don't know if you can see it oh, that's the feather leaf uh japanese magnolia and that's going to go right here and see the the mod podge is drying kind of quickly so we can put a little bit more on there and then lay that down but it's going to, like I said, it's going to, it'll take care of itself when you do the Mod Podge on top. I mean, not Mod Podge, the Liquitex. That medium, let me show you. This is what I use. And I love it. And it's, this one was $31.59, but it is a 32 ounce or 946 milliliter. It's now $26.99. I just went to see because I thought they were on sale. They weren't. And so uh, they're a little bit cheaper now at Hobby Lobby. Okay, this was a purchased flower as well. I'm gonna put that on top of this right here. So I'm gonna put a little more Mod Podge. And this is interesting because it looks like a, a um, Queen Anne's lace. The Queen Anne's lace is white and this is orangey color, sort of yellowy orangey. Okay, so. There we are. We've got that down. I did the Mod Podge first. And now I'm just going to do Mod Podge over this. Kind of thick, very gently. Going in the direction of like the petals and the stems going in different directions so you, you don't tear it apart because you can if you're not very gentle. So I'm just barely brushing over this and I just kind of dab it like this is delicate right here. And so I'm just going to dab it first and then I'll kind of brush it to smooth it out. Put it all over just like this. And your bag, see this is becoming, well it's not dry yet, but see your bag is, you're going to bag is still going to come apart. It's, it's not going to stick it together. You want to make sure that everything is stuck down. So you add more if you need more, wherever you need more. Like this. 
Okay. Now that's pretty good. And it looks a little cloudy right now, but when it's dry, as you can see, when it's dry, the color is much more vivid. So there is this one. And I think that's gonna work fine. So we'll put this one aside. Wipe again. Let that one dry too. And we'll do the last one of these. And I am going to get me some more Liquitex. This is just, it's just fun. I'm, I'm very fascinated these days with uh, the, the pressed flowers. They are awesome. And I think they add such a, a nice touch. I'm going to put this a little thicker than I did because it didn't want to hold as well as I wanted. So see, when I use this on the base before I put the flowers on, I don't need to glue the flowers because this will hold it. But the first one I did, and that's that's kind of a preference because they both work. Um, <clears throat> as you saw, they both work. Move this up. So it's just kind of a preference. This wrinkles the bag up, you know, before you put the flowers down, which that's not really so bad either. So excuse my hand, my flowers are over here. I can move them over to this side, that might be better. Okay, so we're gonna use dandelions next, and these came from my yard. And so I'm just going to put them like so. I think I have this one loose over a little bit. I can't keep my pad. I need to. I didn't need it to change how long it shut the screen. How long it would stay before it shut the screen off, and I didn't do that. So I'm gonna put these like this, and then I have this little one. I'm gonna stick right here, kind of over that one. And then these are again the feather leaf hydrangea. I mean a uh, feather leaf Japanese maple, and I love these because they're so delicate but they're rather sturdy, so they do real well. And they are a little bit, I'm going to, because they want to, I'm gonna turn, no, I can't turn it over, but they don't want to stay down as well because they kind of bow a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little, whoops, I'm gonna put a little glue on this one and that one because I want it to, I want to make sure it stays down. So I'm just going to, because they bow and the liquid, oops, see I broke that one off. Oh well, it's okay. See they're delicate because, got to get over there, because they are dried. So they're, you know, they're fragile. So you got to be careful. Very careful. So I'm going to put this right here. And that's good. And then I'll take this one and I'm going to hold it with my hand because I can hold the bottom of this better with my left hand and get this on here better. I'm out of frame once again. Okay, y'all are so patient with me. And then we'll stick this one on here top of that like that. So I wanted this to look like it was the leaves of this, even though it technically, obviously, is not the leaves that a dandelion has, but it gives you the feel. And that's really all I'm after. Okay, now we take this and I'm going to go over this first very delicately. like this. I'm going to take the head of this because it is so big and thicker. So I'm going to put some glue under that just, just to make sure this one's not, doesn't feel as thick. So I'm not as concerned about that one. And then we're going to do this. So I like to get the parts that I know may give me a problem of coming up first. Get those stuck down, then I can work with the rest of it.
just like this. Now, this Liquitex matte medium is thin, which I like because it also gets in between and down and around. It dries clear, obviously, and matte, obviously, it's matte medium. And um, I really like it. I, I, I really, this is my favorite thing to use, and it, even though it is more expensive to me, it is well worth it. And it lasts forever. I've had this 32 ounce bottle, I guess that's what it is, 900 and something milliliters, 945 milliliters. I've had this bottled for a year, so that's not bad. The price of that's not bad. Now, I don't do a whole lot of this, doing more right at the moment, but I don't, I mean, I, you know, you're not always using it. So it lasts a while. And um, so this is this one. So this is the third one. This one was on coffee dye paper as well. So we'll lay that over to dry. Let's see how the first one is looking. It is beginning to dry, as you can see. I will be using the heat gun on it in just a little bit. Now the next thing that I wanna do, and I'm trying, I'm gonna try something different. I have not tried this before. Let me get a wet wipe because now it's getting a little bit more yucky in my, my clinic right there is not working as well for it. So we'll do a wet wipe and get this up. Okay, now the other thing, I'm, the next thing I'm going to do is this handmade paper looking stuff. And others have done a handmade paper that is um, with, I'm going to go, I, I forgot to get something. So, oh wait, I may have something right here. Hold on. Oh, I do. Okay, never mind. I don't have to get up. Um, the handmade paper, I love it. It's nice. Others have done a similar thing, and that's great, too, the what others have done. What I don't like about what, the, what others have done, and I haven't experimented myself yet to see what... Uh, you could do, but uh, they do do it clear, kind of like a clear, uh, and they do it on the napkin, which I'm going to use napkin, but I'm going to use paper under, I'm going to use the bag actually underneath. Um, and then you don't have to worry about peeling it up or anything. With the others, and I think Treasure Books just recently did one like this, others have done it. Uh, I can't call recall anybody else right now, but there's been several people that have done this process. I'm just going to do it my way, which is to take a, another bag, just like this one. This one is the glassine. This one is made out of tracing paper. It doesn't really matter. Um, either one will work. I have uh, plant matter in this bag, and I have lavender in this bag, and I have the contents of one, uh, let's see if it's, yeah, the contents of this little pouch right here, which is Jasmine Fragrance Sachet. It was this little powdered stuff, which I'm going to be using that as well. I haven't tried this. This is, this is, I haven't done the lavender and or the, uh, this little powdery stuff on this yet. This is the first thing I've done. This is the first thing I have done like this. And um, I like the process. These flowers were, these little tiny flowers right here were purple, so they changed color. The leaves stayed pretty much the same. One thing I, I noticed is that here you can see more white on the leaf, if you can see that in the camera. That's where I didn't get as much uh, of the matte medium as I should have. So that is something to, to look out for. So let me get my plant matter out. First, 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 first things first. I do have to do the matte medium on this. You do have to do this on this first. Can't just glue them down. That I don't think that'll work because it just needs to be this. Okay. Then I'm gonna take some pieces out here. Just some pieces, pull them out, decide what I wanna use. 
I like these little leaves like this, I think work well. So I like those. Oh, I have a, I have a little insect in here. Get him. Got him. Okay, this is, well, it doesn't matter which way the leaves go. Uh, I like these little tiny leaves in here. Here. And here. I like the different colors. This is rosemary, and I like actually the back side of the rosemary because it gives me that white streak, but I'll do both sides. Here's another little leaf, and we're just going to place these however, however we want, and just lay them down. And I'm just going to do a few, and then I'm going to sprinkle some lavender on there. Do one more leaf up here. This little tiny, tiny little leaf I'm going to put down here. And this little leaf I'm going to put right here, which is a different color. So that will give us something different. This is the flower I used on the other. The only thing about this is it's kind of thick. It's not very thick, but it's a little bit thick. So it was a little harder to get that to stay down like it needs to be. So I was going to not... Do that one on here. I'm going to do the other things first, and then I'm going to put this one up here. Okay, that's all I'm going to do on this with this. Now, I want to use the lavender. Let's try that. I don't know how this will work, because I have to sprinkle it on. And I hope that, and I don't know about the thickness of this, but I'm just going to sprinkle this on here in various places. And it's kind of thick, too like those little flowers, but we'll see what it does and how it does. Okay, so got a little bit of that on there. Spread that around a little bit. A little bit right here. Okay, yeah, that's kind of thick on there. I don't know if I like that or not. I don't know if that's going to work. The little flowers were... I saw also have these little grassy looking things and I thought they might be too thick as well, but I'm going to put a little bit on here and we're going to see. So this is a, this is something I've not done. I've not tried these things. So I'm going to put a little bit on here and we'll see how that does. I like these little things too. They're kind of cool. And so this is a grass seed. Okay. Now this little thing, this is, they're almost, this is interesting. It's almost sparkly. So I don't know about this. I don't know what it, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a powdered something. But anyway, we're gonna put a little bit on here. It's got a kind of got a, a shimmery gold, which I do like that. And that's all we're gonna put it at. Now, I am done with the plant matter. I need to get some more of my matte medium out. Pour it on my desktop here. And the nice thing about this matte medium is it's in a bottle that you can you can just pour it out, but then it also will, you can screw the cap off and put, put it back in there. And I say, I don't know how this is going to stick and how that powdery stuff is going to stick because my matte medium was beginning to dry a little bit. So they're going to move around a little bit. Oh, wait, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. Darn it. That's why it wasn't working, right? Supposed to put this on here. This is a this is a one the the white fly of a napkin. <laughs> Y'all are thinking I'm crazy. I know I am, uh, and I'm supposed to be doing it through this, so that keeps that from moving around as much and sticking to your brush. And this will keep this on here, and you want to make sure I kind of dab it on, brush it on. So you do matte medium. You do your plant matter on your bag or your piece of paper or whatever. And then you do a napkin over the top like this. I'm not going all the way at the top. I'll, I'll just cut that off. And you need to make sure that you're getting it thick enough And with the items that are underneath, the leaves do the best because they're so flat. 
but you can get these others to work. So as this dry, dries, I don't need any more on there, but I need to make sure that the napkin that is laying on here goes around it and gets around the thicker things. See, like that kind is kind of thick right there. And that tore a little bit, that doesn't matter. It'll, it'll be fine. So that's how we do this. And I am going to do this one. I'm going to dry it a little, little bit because as it dries, I put my extra matte medium back in the jar. Uh, as it dries, it will stick better when you go around. So you, you have to, this one's a little more tedious because you gotta keep doing that until it sticks good around the thicker things. So this is a little more tedious process still kind of fun though I, I like the process pretty well now others have done it and, and what i don't like about the other processes the process is fine it's essentially the same thing they'll put a cereal you know the the sort of the thick plastic that cereal comes in inside the box they'll lay that down and they'll put a one ply of napkin just like this is on that and then they'll paint it with your decoupage product of choice and then you lay another white one ply piece of napkin on top of that and put it just like I'm doing this which makes a see-through sort of translucent sort of paper which is great on the one side but the back side of that is very shiny very shiny I don't like that. So, but they're mostly, the ones I've looked at, they're using um, watered down school glue, Elmer's glue, uh, or whatever, something like that. And I wonder, I've not tried it, because you don't have to water down this matte medium. It's already thin enough to do what the process is. I've not tried it with just two napkins to see what I think about it and if it is shiny because this matte medium is very matte it is when it's dry it is it is very matte so I don't know if it is what is being used to glue down the plant matter to the napkin so that on the other side it's shiny or if it's because what you have to put it on uh, will make it shiny because it is going to be smoother on that side and so forth. So I don't know if it's the glue product or if it is the process period. And it may be the process period. So give me a minute. Let me dry this a little bit. I know you hate to hear the dryer thing, so I apologize. But I wanted to show you how to do it, and you got to dry this a little bit, and then pat it down again, because you want that napkin to be closely, see right here, there's a place where it's not down good, and you got to dry it a little bit, or wait, and keep patting it until it gets dry enough, uh, to get it around these thicker things. So the lavender is as thick as those little flowers, which is what I suspected. And that's a little tedious, but doable. So I really like the way it looks. Okay, that, that's one that came off on my brush when I was doing it the wrong way. Let me get that one. That one's not gonna stick anyway. Now, okay, get off of there. There we go. Okay, so uh, let me pat that back down. That one doesn't look like it's going to stay either. Um, it might be. It may be on the top as well. It is. So let's get this one off too. Yeah, that was on top. Okay, let me dry it a little bit more. Anyway, um, so I don't like the when you when you peel it off of this plastic sheet that's the 
inside of the cereal box packaging. And you can just pull it off and it's translucent and it's very, very cool. I love it. I really do. But um, I don't like the shiny. Uh, the other side of it is very shiny. I do not like the very shiny. And I am I have not tried a different process, a different product than most people are using. I needed to pull this off and pull this up before I dry it more because it's drying to my table. But this is something I can take off and so you just, and then you can, you know, you've got the rest of the nap can be used. Let me take this up here. There. You can pull this off to around uh, here as it dries, it's gonna come off. Now, I've never done it this, I've done it this way, but not with these same products, uh, plant matter, I shouldn't say products, not with the same plant matter. Okay, so I'm going to take this, see this has a little bit, I could cut it, but I think I'm going to roll it underneath. It's still wet enough, I think it will stick, but not so wet. And I can, I can glue it later if I need to, but I kind of like it rolling under there instead of trying to cut it or I could leave it torn raggedy that would be okay too that's where it tore earlier that one is not going to stay uh, I could put a little tissue over it I'm not going to that's where my tissue tore earlier okay so let's uh, finish drying this because this is very important that this one gets dry and pat it down and then dry the wool in the water so that there it's not. Now when it's completely dry, it'll just have air pockets right there, which is what I'm trying to avoid. It's not going to go anywhere, I don't think, but I'm trying to avoid air pockets. And it takes practice. This is the only second one I've ever done, so, you know, I'm sure I'll get better. <laughs> uh, well, maybe I'll get better if I choose to do this more. Um, let me get this up here so you can see. See right here, it needs to be padded in. And I just do this so the bristles of the brush can go around the, the thicker things and go in between the thicker things and get that down so that it will hold well. But I think that's kind of neat looking. I like it. So that's just something else that you can do uh, with plant matter. These were not even dried or pressed. Straight out of the garden. In this bag, I put them out of the garden, out of, out of my yard, into this bag. They've been in this bag several days. Uh, I think this is uh, Tuesday. No, this is Thursday. I got these on Sunday. So they have done well. I'm just putting these back in. But these, these have done well. They're stayed green. Here's a piece of rosemary I just stuck in here. And it's still green and would still work. So the plant matter can just be straight out of the yard. Straight out of, yeah. Put straight on here and done perfectly. I wouldn't suggest that with the dried flower, the pressed flowers, as much. I'm going to turn it like I want to do too. Okay, so we're going to let that dry a little bit. I think that's pressed. Now this one is almost dry. I'm going to dry it a little bit more. You can see it's shiny, a little bit shiny where it's not dry. See if you can see. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, a little bit around this orange flower right here is not dry. You can tell that because it's a little bit shiny. This is not shiny at all when it is dry. So right down here is a little area. And it's, it's okay. It's not going to burn up anything. I have a Darcy heat tool. 
gets pretty hot. I wouldn't put my hand under it, but it's it's more of a heat tool than the blow dryer sort. So it can be it could be that sort. That would work just as well. Um, but it doesn't hurt to do this. down some of these as well. I've got a little more. Let me put a little more Liquitex on that yellow flower. It is wanting to lift just a little bit. So it's just a little bit of a process. Just put a little bit more on it and it, it, it seeps through basically. Uh, you also could put a napkin over this if you wanted to. I like it being more not that way. Not with a napkin. Just That's just me. Preference. Personal preference. I'm going to stick a little glue under this. Because he's kind of a thick guy. And he might come up. So it's just a play with it, see what it does. I will show you what I have done in a book, and this is not the first time I've done this in a book, uh, so I know that it will work. This is, needs a little bit of holding down right there, but the rest of that's doing real well. This, 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 these little petals were a little bit, uh, there, that's better. Okay, now let me dry it some more where I just put this. I'll be right back. Okay. Now, you can see. A little bit of glue right there will smooth. What is that? Okay, it was, yeah, it was a little piece of napkin or something. And then on this, I'm going to glue this right here because that doesn't want to stay down and I don't want to put any more on top. So we're going to glue that right there. And that'll stay. When that dries, it'll be good. So you just keep applying if you need to more um, and then here's the result of this one this one is thicker the plant matter is thicker so it, I had to put it thicker on to hold it down so it is a little bit more not dry and it was the last one I did uh, but let me just dry it a little bit A little better. So here is the results, and this one is pretty dry, I think. Yeah, this one is a little wet right there, but this one is pretty dry all over. And I'm gonna stick this one up here. Um, and this is what you get. Let me show you the book. I didn't think to bring this over, I apologize. Uh, and I need to get my Liquitex back up off the table so I can not mess things up. But anyway, this is another way to use dried flowers, whether they are bought or from your garden or your yard. And anything that can be used is good. I'm, I'm just getting into these dried flower things, so let me see if I can find this one quickly in this journal here. 
And my Etsy shop is Tattered Paper and Lace. Uh, this is Tattered Paper and Lace on YouTube. And I have several journals in my shop at the moment. This is a like a ladies journal that I've got going on here. I'm trying to find this page that has the dried flowers on it. I meant to, to search for that ahead of time and I forgot. I forgot to do it. So anyway, let's see. I'm not coming across it. Ah, I know it's it's in here somewhere. Y'all just keep watching the stuff dry. <laughs> and watching, look at, study the placement and study this one. Because this one, you know, like right here, there is a little bit of, you still can tap it down because it's not completely dry. And tap it down around some of these thicker things and then it won't have air pockets in it. See, it's getting close enough to dry now that you can touch it and it not um, come back on your fingers. So you can actually go in. I'm going in with, with my nail and just kind of tamping it down. It's kind of a learning process. Like I said, it's the first time I've ever done it with these little bits like this. Well, guys, I'm not finding I hate that. I'm not finding it. I'm not finding this page. So I could give you a quick, you could be looking at it while I'm looking at it. I've already got a flip through video of this, but uh, it is, here it is. It's still available in my shop. And this is, I, I just glued this down. These flowers came from my yard. I just glued these down, and then I did do the Liquitex matte medium over all of it after I glued the flowers down. I did not put the matte medium first, uh, and they're down good. They're, they're not gonna they're not gonna go anywhere. So I think that just looks lovely the way that is. Uh, so you can do them in your journals directly to a page. This is this journal. It's in my shop, Tattered Paper and Lace. I appreciate you going and taking a look. I have a flip through of it also in my YouTube. So that is this. This will come up. Oh, I might have waited too long on that one. I'll try to kind of keep them. There we go. Uh, and then, you know, and then the thing is, that one's too wide. Uh, here, they're see-through. These are glassine, so they're a little see-through. So when you put something in, now the other thing I know this is running long, but the I was hoping to get it dry enough that I could stamp. That one's not dry enough. So I'm. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to stamp it on this video because it's not dry enough. But I was going to do um, like a a cancellation mark. Uh, from a stamp set that I have like right up here you could do uh, using Tim Holtz field notes you can do numbers up there you can just do a a uh, Tracy Fox label or anybody's label or your own label um, do a number in the label if it doesn't have a number I have something here that has a number let's see this might work to do just a number up there let's see how that looks I don't know I haven't I haven't investigated it but this is something that came in the mail. I love using things that come in the mail. And I've got my husband is trained. He, he brings me things and says, can you use this? And I sometimes say, no, I don't think I'll be able to use that one. And other times I go, yes, thank you so much. So I have this thing. It has a number on it. So you can just put it, let me put it back down. You can just put a number up there. You can stamp a number up there. Um, you know, do whatever you need to. But I was going to stamp, actually, with rubber stamps. Uh, that one looks good on that because I like the white on the white. So I'm not going to do that now because it's not dry enough. But I hope you enjoyed the process. 
of how to do this, and, and this is dry enough that I usually just trim this up with scissors, just like this. It tore off pretty well. If you have it uh, wet enough, it'll tear off pretty well. I don't mind the little ragged edges. I'm going to leave them probably a little ragged. I like how that turned out. <clears throat> I like this little sand, this little stuff is flat enough and I like I like how that looks and how that did. Uh, the lavender is a little thick. It is as thick as these were and I'll tell you something else I do. I used to work in the wall covering industry and I, at one point in time I actually hung wallpaper and one of the tools that you use when you're hanging wallpaper is this and this is a seam roller so it's like a brayer but this is wood and it's only about inch and a half wide but on something like this I go through and when it's dry enough I go through like this and I flatten those things which does help and so those are very much flatter and I like that better it also will help it to stick so you could probably use a brayer. I like this because it's little. And they may make little brayers. I only have one. It's the regular, the normal regular size brayer. And then if there's any pieces on this that doesn't seem to want to stay down, you can put a little glue under it. It's not going to hurt it. It's not going to, uh, it's going to be fine. Um, like right here, this little piece right here doesn't seem to want to stay. So you can put a little more matte medium over it or you can tear that napkin up just a little bit and put a little bit of glue underneath that and then put it back down and then that would that would hold it. I think it'll be fine when it's all dry. It's not completely dry. Uh, so that is my process for today. A new way to, well, not necessarily new. Somebody else may have done it. I really don't know. Uh, another way to use your pressed flowers and your plant matter uh, this would make a great pocket in a journal with a tag or a journaling card inside. These will open up. And I'm just making sure they all are opened up. Because if you don't go back before too late, it doesn't stick much, but it sticks a little bit. So I like to kind of break that loose a bit. And that's what I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long. Uh, when you're doing a process video, as those of you who have done that, it is time consuming. And so I try to do as much ahead of time as possible. So anyway, I appreciate you watching. Uh, and remember to go check out my Etsy, Tattered Paper and Lace. I have a few journals in there now. One very nice spring one, this ladies journal I just was showing you with the flower, the, the pressed flowers on the page. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.